So now that we've designed our internet browser cache, let's apply those same concepts to design a cache for the processor. So the processor issues load and store instructions. And let's say, for example, it issues a load instruction. What that ultimately produces is a 32-bit address. And I use that 32-bit address to look up some location in memory. And I bring that data and feed it into a register. And what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to design a cache that contains a portion of my memory system on the processor itself. Okay, so in this example, I'm designing a cache that has eight sets, where a set is nothing but a row in my, in my cache. And each set contains an eight byte word. This is also referred to as one block or one line. So I'm essentially managing my cache at the granularity of a block or a line or an eight byte word. So in this example, this is a cache that has eight sets where each set is composed of an eight byte word. So the total capacity of this cache is 64 bytes. So it's a fairly small cache and I've kept it small just so that my example and explanation are, are manageable. So now let's walk through an example where the program is accessing a bunch of data in memory and it starts at data address zero and just sequentially starts accessing all the subsequent bytes. So initially it makes a request for byte zero. You look up your cache, that data is not going to be in your cache because this is the very first access to that data. So it goes to memory and address zero is the one sitting right here. But I'm always going to manage the cache at the granularity of eight bytes. I can't just bring one byte in and stick it into my cache. I always have to fetch eight bytes at a time. So I bring in an entire block starting at address zero. And so I'm bringing addresses zero through seven and putting it into my cache. This is also referred to as block number zero, right? This is the very first block in my memory. So it's block zero. And because it's block zero, I'm going to put it into set zero. So set zero now contains the data that was sitting at addresses zero through seven. Then I move on and access the next byte of data, which is the byte at address eight. Since that's not currently sitting in my cache, I have to go to memory and bring that data. Again, I'm going to bring data in eight byte chunks. So I bring in bytes at addresses eight through 15. This is also referred to as block number one. And so it gets placed in set number one. So I have the data sitting in addresses eight through 15 over here, right? So the set initially got block zero and now block one is sitting here. Okay, then I get the next eight bytes, bring them in. Again, that's block two. So block two comes in, gets placed in set two. That's the data at addresses 16 through 23. This goes on. Finally, I bring in block seven. That gets placed in set seven. And that's, that's the memory locations 56 through 63. Now, when I move on and bring in the next eight bytes, that's bytes 64 through 71. That's also referred to as block eight. There is no set eight, right? So if I'm basically going through my sets in round robin fashion, this next block eight that I bring in has to go back to set zero, right? So this has to go in over here. That means whatever contents are sitting over there now have to get evicted. So the bytes with addresses zero through seven now get evicted and they get replaced with the data at addresses 64 through 71. So now block eight is occupying that location. Then when I move on to block nine, that's the data at addresses 72 through 79. That gets placed in over here. This data that was sitting there gets evicted. And so now you have bytes at addresses 72 through 79 sitting here. And so block nine is has mapped here. So you'll essentially see that blocks that are multiples of eight are all going to map to set zero. And blocks that are multiples of eight plus one, so one, nine, 17, 25, get mapped to set one and so on. So you can essentially look at block ID modulo eight, and that gives you the set that you are going to map to. Okay, so that's how I compute which set I'm going to map a block into. And how do I get the block number itself? If I look at my address, if I divide that address by eight, 
I get my block ID, right? So any address sitting over here, let's say address four, four divided by eight gives me the integer zero. That's block number zero. Take any byte over here. Let's say byte number 13. 13 divided by eight gives me the integer one. So that's my block ID again, right? So essentially dividing a number by eight gives me the block ID. That's equivalent to shifting the address three places to the right. Okay, so if I look at my address and I exclude the last three bits, that gives me my block ID. And if I take this block ID and do modulo eight, that gives me the set that I mapped to. And doing modulo eight is nothing but looking at what those last three bits are, right? So these last three bits are my index into the cache. So let me explain this one more time and let's kind of go through this in more detail and let's look at each address carefully. So the CPU starts by accessing address zero. Okay, so let's just write it all out in detail. So this is address zero. We said that these three bits over here is my, is my block ID modulo eight, which is my set number. So this tells me that byte zero is going to map to set number zero. And when I bring in data, I always bring in eight consecutive bytes. Okay, so if you look at the next byte, which is byte one, that's also gonna have the same index bits. And all that changes are these last three bits, right? So as I go through the different bytes in that first block, I'm gonna change the last, I'm gonna change the last three bits and basically walk through from zero all the way to seven, right? So these last three bits are really representing a specific byte in my eight byte block. So those last three bits over here are referred to as my offset. Once you've figured out which block this maps to, these last three bits are going to be used to pick out one specific byte from that eight byte block. So if I'd used, let's say a 16 byte block, then I would use the last four bits to pick a specific byte out of that block. Okay, so these last few bits are referred to as the offset bits. Like we've just seen, the next three bits over here are referred to as my index bits because that's how I figure out which set I map to, right? So now if we just continue with this example again, when I go to byte eight, that's going to be a bunch of zeros, then zero, zero, one, and then zero, 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 right? So these three bits tell me that byte eight corresponds to the first byte in that block. Zero, zero, one tells me that this is going to get mapped to set number one. Okay, and then likewise, byte nine would be zero, 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 one. Again, it's mapped to set number one. And then it's the second byte in that block. So it would, it would be zero, zero, one over here and so on. Okay, so now when you finally go to byte number 64, what address does that have? That's gonna be zero, zero. And then it's finally gonna be a one over here. And then zero, 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 zero. Right, so that's address 64. And you'll see that this is also going to map to set number zero. So essentially this address here and this address over here are both mapping to the same location in cache. And I need some way to distinguish between these two. And how do I do that? It's basically by looking at these most significant bits over here. So the most significant bits for address zero are all zeros. The most significant bits for address 64 are all zeros ending in a one. So that's how I discriminate between two different addresses that map to the same set, right? So essentially the bits from this point on till here are referred to as the tag bits. And every time I bring a block into my cache, into my data array, I'm going to maintain a separate tag array over here that keeps track of these 26 bits here, right? Why 26? Because this is a 32 bit address and I use three bits to indicate the offset, three bits to indicate the index. And so that leaves 26 bits over here, which represent my tag. And that's what's going to get placed over here. So this next slide shows you exactly this organization. So I have three bits over here, which are my offset. They tell me which byte inside a block I'm, I'm interested in. The next three bits tell me block ID modulo eight. And so that tells me my set number. And so this is referred to as my index into my cache. And then the next 26 bits are my tag bits. 
And I realized that this is a little hard to kind of wrap your mind around, which is why I first discussed the internet browser analogy. Now let's see how that analogy maps to this example here. So when I do cnn.com slash story 34.html, this last bit over here is my offset, right? Because I said that when I access a certain website, I bring the entire website and place it into one entry in my cache, that is into one set. And so what is comprised in that set is story one, story two, and so on. And so this last portion of my URL is my offset into a specific block. It tells me that once I've located my block, what I'm interested in is the 34th story in that website. So that's that last portion is very similar to my offset bits. Then what is my index over here? In this case, I'm using the first letter as my index. In this case, C tells me that this website is going to be stored in the third entry here, right? So this is nothing but my index bits. And once I've done that, I'm going to put nn.com in my tags because that helps me confirm that what is in this third entry is cnn.com and not carmax. So we've seen before how you can take a URL and split it into offset, index, and tag bits. And exactly the same way, you can take an address that is accessing memory and you can break it up into offset bits, index bits, and then tag bits. So the last three bits tell me which byte in the block I'm interested in. The next three bits help me identify which set I'm going to map into. And then the rest of the bits of the address help me identify exactly which block I'm dealing with. This particular cache is also referred to as a direct mapped cache. And this refers to the fact that every single address maps to a unique set and there's only one possible block I can keep in that set. So every single address maps to a unique location in my cache. And so if something else is sitting there, that other block has to be evicted to make room for this new block coming in.